Hey guys, thanks for checking back in today. I really appreciate it. So today what we're going to do is we're going to build my coffee table. Not something for somebody else. This one is ours. It's staying here. Now it's actually got a really different design uh, than I normally do. As you can see, it's got centralized drawers and cubbies on each side, which inevitably are going to get filled up with baskets, let's be honest. And uh, yeah, I did a brand new color on this guy too. It's called Flagstone. I actually ended up really liking the color. I wasn't too sure about it at first, but I really like it. So let's jump into it and I'll show you how I built this guy. So the whole carcass of this guy is actually pretty simple. I've got a 1x6x8 and a 1x8x6 of knotty pine. I'm taking my 1x6, I'm ripping it down into 2.5 wide strips and inch and 3 quarter wide strips. And then my 1x8, I've just ripped down into 4 inch and a half wide strips the entire length of the board. And then over at the miter saw, I'm going to take my two leg pieces, so my two and a half, my inch and three quarter, square up the one end and just cut all four of them to 17 and three quarters. I've got a three quarter inch top that'll, or 17 and a quarter, sorry. I've got a three quarter inch top that'll give me an 18 inch table overall. Now we just have to fabricate our legs. So I'm going to take my inch and three quarter wide piece. I'm going to run a bead of glue, use some inch and a half brads, and I'm just going to tack my two and a half inch wide piece onto it after that. Now this will give me a leg that is the exact same dimensions, two and a half by two and a half, both directions. Nobody likes to see brad nails, so we'll just plug those. Pretend like they never happened. Shh. Now for our top, I've got two project panels. These are Naughty Pine project panels. They're 12 inches wide by 48 inches long. So what I actually did was I just took and ran a bead of glue and laminated the two panels together. It'll literally just look like a whole bunch of individual panels. Uh, they just didn't have one wide enough for me, so I just made this work. If you don't have enough clamps to just do a glue up like that, you can use some pocket holes. Nobody will ever see them anyway. After that, I'm squaring up my one end, cut off the other end to the final length that you need, and then I'm taking a half inch round over and I'm doing a round over all around the top just to give it a nice profile on top just so it's not as plain looking. Now this is a simple method you can use to figure out the length of your stretchers. Take both your legs, put them on one end, measure the remaining distance and then subtract your overhang. I've got a half inch overhang on each side so I took one inch off of my measurement, again cut all four of my stretchers, short side, long side, boom, done. Then to attach the stretchers to the legs, we're just going to drill two pocket holes in each end of all of them. So get to drilling. Now, just for a little bit of profile so the legs aren't so boring, I'm measuring back one inch on my legs. And then I'm just going to take my ruler and my combination square and I'm just going to make a 45 degree angle on the bottom side of every leg and then just take cut that off at the miter saw. It's just so the legs aren't just a plain stick in the ground. Much better. So I lied. I actually cut my legs about a quarter inch too long just to make sure that I could come back and square them all up at the exact same time afterwards. Now I want the top of my bottom stretcher to be three inches off the ground. So I'm just making a mark there. And then after this, it's nothing more than just clamping them down to the table, gluing and screwing them. So your short sides I built first, and then I can just stand those up and attach my long side stretchers and then just roll it over and do the exact same thing. When it comes to adding your bottom shelf, you can do it two ways. You can take, cut your piece of plywood out to the exact size you need, drill a whole bunch of pocket holes all around the underside, and then screw it into place. 
I don't really like that method. It's just way too many pocket holes going on if somebody looks. So cleaner method is to do this. Just go out and take a piece of cold molding. You can buy them in store. Mark it. Cut it to length. And then just run a bead of glue. I'm just using some inch and a quarter brads after this. And I'm just nailing them into place. Now I'm using this three quarter inch spacer on top to make sure that I'm referencing the height of the top of my shelf after this is put in. After that, just go around the entire table, gluing and nailing in your trim. Then when somebody looks underneath of it, it's going to have a much cleaner look because the trim will actually cover up the bottom pocket hole on your stretchers. Once you drop your shelf in, it'll actually cover up the top pocket hole. So then from the underside, there will be no visible pocket hole. So this is a good method to hide those. Run a bead of glue, pound it into place. I went for a nice tight fit. I'm just putting a couple tacks with some inch and a quarter brad nails into each end. And I've got my clamps in the center there just so it uh, doesn't want to bow out on me. It keeps a nice tight fit until the glue dries. Now we need to make our dividers. Now those I'm just cutting to a full height to the top of my stretchers so that way my top will actually rest on it and then from there cut them to width I'm using a scrap piece of my 1x2 to notch out a chunk of where my stretcher is going to be and just adding one pocket hole if you don't have a small pocket hole jig you can just brad nail through your stretcher into that now because we don't want our plywood ends to be visible I'm just going to use some edge banding and just cover that up. Find out where you want your stretchers to be. Mark a couple of straight lines on each side with your square. Run a bead of glue. Stand up your stretchers and then screw them into place. I've got a couple or a few screws going down and then I said one into each stretcher front and back. All the screws are going to be on the inside where the drawers are so you'll never see them anyway. Just make sure you keep those walls nice and square with the bottom. Now for our back panel, same thing, ran a bead of glue, I went for a nice tight fit, just a couple of inch and a quarter brads on top, run your screws in, now we've got the box where our drawers are going to go. On the front side it's nothing more than just our divider to split our two drawers, so it's just a one by two left over from the stretchers. Now on the back side, you can leave this open if you want, just uh, it looked too plain to me so I've got some leftover trim from another project. I'm just going to go ahead and just picture frame it in. If you have leftover cold molding from putting on the bottom shelf your trim, go ahead and use that. You can literally use whatever trim you want in here, it's just a little something, dress it up, don't leave it plain, it just looks like you had no imagination otherwise and we don't want that. If you have a pin nailer, that would be the ideal thing to put these in with, but I don't. So I ended up having to use my brad and then go back and plug the holes with some filler and then sand it down. Not the end of the world, but it is a little bit more noticeable if you know what you're looking for. And now it's drawer time. So I bought a two by four inch chunk of half inch birch plywood from my local supplier and I had them rip it down into a couple of four inch wide strips for me. Now for my drawer front and back, I took my overall drawer width, subtracted one inch off of that and that'll give me room for my half inch drawer slides on each side. Then for my lengths, I made them at 18 inches. That will give me an overall 19 inch outside diameter box and I've got a 20 inch hole in the table frame which is perfect. Now I'm just gluing and brad nailing this guy together with some uh, inch and a quarter brads. This will be plenty strong, don't worry about that. And then for the drawer bottom, it's a quarter inch plywood bottom, run a bead of glue all around the outside and I'm using 5 eighths inch brad nails. I tack one corner, square up the drawer, tack another corner. Now I cut my drawer bottom an eighth of inch too small, that way I had a sixteenth of an inch uh, wiggle room all the way around. For my drawer fronts, I'm literally just cutting out another piece of a scrap 1x6 of knotty pine that I've had laying around for a while. You could leave those flat, you could do a routered edge on them, that's entirely up to you. And now it's just a whole pile of finishing, so sand it up through the grits, I didn't want to bore you with that, 80, 120, 220. And then go ahead and finish it however you want, Danish oil, stain, anything, 
Uh, I just, like I said, stained this in flagstone and I'm applying three coats of water-based clear sanding before my last coat. Now we're in the home stretch. We're getting into the nitty gritty, the final few details, and then we can actually have our table. So one of those is obviously installing our drawer slides and our drawer hardware on the front. The drawer hardware on the front is simple, just center it up, drill a few holes. Um, use some playing cards to set your spacing and stuff like that, but it's really easy. Your drawer slides, however, are easy on the bottom, a little bit more difficult when you start getting up high. So how do you mount them? So our bottom one, what I've done is I've taken a piece of quarter inch ply, just rest it on the bottom and set your depth, put your drawer slide on that, screw it in, simple. Your upper, however, there's nothing to rest it on. So what do you do? So in this case, I'm going to take my total measurement from here to here, which in my case is seven and an eighth. Then measure your drawer slide, which is seven eighths of an inch in my case, and I subtract seven eighths from seven and an eighth, which leaves me with six and a quarter. So I'm gonna go and cut a spacer at six and a quarter inches. Then I can rest this on top of my drawer slide. Set the next drawer slide on top, set my spacing, and I've got a quarter inch gap right there. And this will work for any combination of drawer slides, drawer openings, anything like that. So if you've got full extensions, it's all the same procedure. Measure your total opening from the bottom to the bottom of the next drawer. Subtract the width of your drawer slides. Good to go. And then for our top, all I'm using is these simple little angle brackets and some half inch screws. I just attach them on the inside and then it's screwed into the top as well. And that'll, uh, the screws are undersized so it gives them wiggle room inside of the hole. That way if the top moves around from expansion and contraction, it's got room to move, but it's really, really simple. Before you know it, you've got a wooden structure that actually resembles something in your living room. <laughs> uh, if you guys like this video, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. If you guys picked anything up from this as well, any tips or anything, or if you just like the design, let me know. Uh, comment, like, subscribe would be awesome. I would really, really appreciate it. If there's something you guys maybe would do differently on your own, go for it. I mean, like I said, this was just our own sort of thing, but Slade's tired. I'm tired, ready for a drink. The table is done. I'll see you in the next one.